in India, we are actually a food company. Okay. Uh, there, there are very few places in the world where we actually have brands and distribute food uh, and mm -hmm. consumer products, which is edible oils yeah. in this case. Uh, so, but I think it is, uh, if you look at the history of Kargil in India, uh -huh. we originally uh, have been supplying or buying commodities from India or into India. This is in the 70s when India was uh, a deficit sugar and some of the other commodities. Uh, Kargil was one of the organizations which was actually getting in, you know, getting in products or buying products from India. Over the years, we've kind of evolved. Uh, we've got into manufacturing in India. We have uh, a reasonably sized asset base here. Today, we have three refineries, world-class refineries for edible oils. We have plants for manufacturing animal feed, uh, animal premixes, and uh, we have, uh, you know, a sugar refinery as a joint venture. So a number of assets on the ground, we have brands, uh, we are one of the leading edible oil brand players. We have a distribution and marketing for animal feed and premixes. Uh, and we are into uh, trading, of course, which is trading commodities like sugar and uh, cotton and some of the other grains. But we've moved one step further. We manage supply chains. Okay. Essentially, uh, they're customers whose needs for uh, ingredients and uh, these are commodity ingredients, is around the year. Okay. The crops that get harvested happen once a year at best, two, twice a year. So how do you manage this harvest twice a year and a need which is around the year? So we come in the middle between the farmer and the producer of food to manage that supply chain of linking commodities from the farmers to the users. I would say in terms of revenues, there is uh, the way I look at it sometimes, or uh, sometimes the corporation looks at it, is that what part of Cargill's global turnover is linked to business in India. And uh, I think last year we came up with a number, and this is not really turnover as you go by the books. This is saying that, okay, business that is done in, in maybe some other country's books, but is linked to what is uh, done in India. Our, uh, out of the $119 billion that we have uh, as the Kargil Global Turnover, uh, $3.5 billion was linked to business in India. In the edible oil space, we kind of, we started off with one brand, which was Nature Fresh, then we added Gemini, then we acquired Rath in the hydro fat space, we have acquired uh, Suikar thereafter. We could be, uh, we would be getting in, or we have been in the olive oil space, that's the next uh, uh, sort of uh, fat. Then we are getting into specialized fats, things like uh, specific needs of the industry for bakery, ice cream, chocolate, uh, those kind of things. Uh, we could be looking at doing similar things in uh, the flour space. We've actually, if I look at the past, it's been a combination of investing in assets, greenfielding uh, assets, it's about acquisitions, it's about acquiring assets, it's also about acquiring brands. So uh, I, I would say that we have, uh, our experience so far has told us that it has to be a mix of various things uh, rather than saying that, okay, we will only grow this way. The first thing is that it's a good thought. It's, it's a need. Uh, it's a need which probably has been uh, expressed uh, in a more broad manner uh, and so where we stand is I think it's a it's a good bill the challenge is not with what is in it but how it will get executed so could, it's, do you think companies like you could play yes. a role so I think there is, there is a role uh, for the private sector there should be a role for private sector in the space of uh, distribution processing uh, managing the supply chain uh, but uh, and and I, I think that's where uh, the government and the private sector needs to come together.